Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope we're all well. So today we're on to episode 9 and we are in Belarus heading down to Warsaw. And just for something different, we're in the A321 support uh, in the uh, very nice Lufthansa livery. Uh, plane is also up and ready to go. And as usual, we have our friend with us, Adam, who will be also traveling down with us. Good morning, Adam. Morning. Adam is currently Kenya Airways, but not. He's uh, DHL Cargo, I believe, in a 737. <coughs> and is off to directly above us, as it were, straight ahead of us. Ignition set to right. Okay, so we're ready to, to taxi. So let's call out the pushback tug. Starting. And uh, let's get on with it. Ground to complete. Please show me where you want to go. So we want to go around this way. So let's set that. There we go. Ground to complete. Tower is driving up. Let me uh, turn him down because he's extremely Into loud. Up. As he always is. Starting right. engine one. My apologies, guys. Right, turn the master volume on so you can hear what's going on. As I say, the plane is fully ready for departure. Uh, so we'll just push back and get on with it. Uh, I hope we're all well. I hope we're uh, all having a good time. And I hope we're enjoying the series. And if you are, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. And uh, hit subscribe. Just a bit of house maintenance. These videos come out three times a week. As we attempt to travel around the world. And we're already, as I say, on episode number nine. So okay, we're, we're getting I'll through them. Ready to connect. And a lot of episodes to, con to come. So, cabin's ready. And we are set for our journey. Uh, don't forget, also, guys, we live stream four times a week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, 8 o'clock UK time and those live streams can be found on this channel as well as on Twitch. The Twitch channel is also the same name as this channel. So if you're a Twitch person, just search up Captain Paul D. CPT Paul D. Right, just waiting for him to tell us. Here we go, releasing the parking brake. Back. Cool, cool, cool. As is the norm, guys, I will switch on the cameras uh, when it comes time to take off. How are you getting on, Adam? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to go, mate. I don't need to push back because I'm facing the way you are. Yeah. Okay. I'll just follow you out. Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Sounds like a good plan. Once we get in the air, I need to make T number two. Acceleration complete. Safe parking brake. Disconnect himself. Please stand by. Okay, he's just 
disconnected so let's just make sure we've got everything on seatbelt signs are on that's all looking good armed yep that's all looking nice Turn up a little bit dome light is fine let's get the wing lights on navigation light can come on to there and then we'll put our taxi light on cool Now today, luckily, I definitely have fuel. Mind <laughs> you, to be fair, I also had fuel yesterday. He flaps set to take off. And flaps have already been set. Now is it connected and your engines on? And the engines are on. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Set for a good flight then. Fingers crossed. Okay, we'll go down here. I think oh, Eddie will find something. Oh, blessed. Blessed is the name Eddie. Okay. Okay, let's go. I'll turn on the... This one, guys. Oh, it's moved a little bit not uncommon things get tap knocked by either myself or her indoors or the cat there's our learned colleague there I've got the sim up very high now with the settings so we might see a little bit of glitching from time to time guys um, there's too much I can do it's a bit of a no-win situation you you either want scenery or you don't want scenery in this situation uh, the sex it's a bit weird the map doesn't reckon doesn't hold with the uh, navigraph charts yeah, I've had that happen to me a few times. No, yeah, it's really glitching. What the hell is it? Is this only this plane doing it? Um. Oh, it's really glitching. Not on my, a little bit on my screen, but the OBS is really glitching. cover and it will sort itself out as we get away from other sceneries around us uh, I think I fixed it now for some reason stream elements being open at the same time it's giving it a little bit of a, a fit guys so my apologies about that it's not doing it at all now behind me. I am. Cool. Okay. Snoopy outside while we're going straight. Oh, you're well coming. Slow down a bit. You're doing a shame tuck. It's not that the Airbus, once you give it a little bit of throttle, oh, no, yeah. it's pretty quick at taxi. Yeah, the Boeing needs a little bit more juice. It does, yeah. But then it sounds really good when you give it that little bit of juice and keep the juice on. Yeah.
just because I've got a very high uh, takeoff speed will go to the bottom of the runway. Got quite a lot of weight on today, which is great. We will be using Toga Thrust for additional umpiness. Oh, I was going to say, you are piloting it. Oh, you just had to go there. <laughs> the first insult of the day is coming through <laughs> loud and clear. Um. <laughs> it just reminds me of that conversation you were having with Sean last night. Sean? Sure. Well, yeah. Day. Sean. Oh, well. Over what is it WhatsApp or text message? No, in Discord. Oh, uh, Discord, okay. When you sent that whole sentence back. <laughs> it was quite funny to be fair. <laughs> Not excessive but funny. Just ever so slightly excessive. Yeah. Better put my TCAS on would help. Nothing along with my aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're coming up to the turn. I'm watching backwards so I can't see but I know by looking at the map that we're coming up to the turn. Surprised how hard this is to, uh, in this case, line up the plane when I'm outside the plane. Okay, so just checking there's nothing coming in, and there is not, so we're all clear. Cool, so let's line up with the runway. See, and then you let off the brakes and it like. Approaching three, one, right. Okay. Let's get our runway lights on. Taxi lights can come off. On okay. runway three, A bit one, short. right. Okay, your cam can come on. line her up okay let me just check the positioning guys make sure you guys are getting a nice view as we take off that looks okay cool right let's uh, verify everything looks good flaps says check cabin is ready TCAS is on standby let's uh, oh, go it. ignore that that happens every time with these bus right here we go Guys, let's 
go into climb, uh, autopilot can come on, repeat us the uh, keep the flaps open, uh, out for now, just for the assistance of climbing. Um, I'll shout you when I've made the turn. Okay. You know, good, good gap then. Yeah, I'm lining up and waiting. Yeah, okay. Following out the constraints, so by following out the constraints, the the VNAV will uh, sort the plane out basically. Just sort out this two cuts. Get another little cheeky flyby. Just the launch is quite a long straight out. It's about 15 miles. Yeah. Okay, flaps can come in. To be fair, flap one is barely any flaps at all. But we'll pull them in anyway. Start, start your turn. I mean, start. Your take <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're a little ways out now, so you should be good to start. Okay, let's go to standard. Initial flight level one six zero. These Airbuses do not climb fast. Unlike the pocket rocket that's behind me. They climb really fast, but not very quick, if that makes sense. So these ones will fly quicker, the yeah, buses. But, yeah, they're not as quick at climbing, especially when you're going up to somewhere like 350. Yeah, Turn down the master volume. It's a smidge. Put our background music on. And that's it, guys. We are climbing. We come up to a nice cheeky little turn here. I'll jump out the plane, not literally, as we start the turn. has woken up so she's off to make the tea that's what we call the, the streamers call their partners the hand of god well some so while we're while we're in flight guys what i had thought i would do for you guys um is i'm going to show you a video of the new x-plane 12 coming out very soon so i thought um michael brown posted it so if you want to watch the whole the whole video um, feel free to check out his channel Michael Brown his name is um, if I remember he's got memory like a fish 
I'll li I'll link the uh, channel his channel details down below. But uh, what I'll do for now is I will uh, show you once we get into the cruise some of the details that I I have spotted, uh, which I think are worth a mention. Some of the things that are coming to X Main 12 and also some of the things that don't impress me so there are some things that impress me and there are things that I am very disappointed that are not coming to x 12 especially for people that don't have unlimited resources uh, so we'll get into that when we get into the cruise um, light time on this one is approximately I think it's an hour or so hour and ten minutes on like that so we'll have plenty of time to have a conversation about it um, they released two videos last night so there's plenty to discuss uh, Austin who's the person behind X-Plane had quite an interesting conversation about certain things that he's been working on the flight dynamics etc etc and his opinion on certain things as to why he's not bringing them to X Plane 12. Um, yeah. So, there are things that do disappoint me about the new X Plane 12 that's coming. Um, but we'll, we'll look into that. Um, there are things that, for people like me, it's not so bad because we're already heavily invested in X Plane 11. So, you know, all that we've been spent, luckily, planes, sceneries, add-ons and all that will all migrate over to x Main 12 because basically x Main 12 is built on the same, exact same platform as the x Main 11, as was the 10. So all these things can be moved over within a day or so. Um, some companies will probably be cheeky and try and charge you for the, the carryover. Hopefully not too many. Some will. I know for argument's sake, the Challenger will not will not charge you for carrying your plane over to X Plane 12. Um. So yeah, we'll look at the video uh, while we're in the while we're in the cruise and uh, take a look up. And I I open I open the comments below, guys, as it were, um, and I look want you to comment back what your thoughts are on the x Plane 12 and, and what you think um, is good and bad about it and yeah let's let's have a let's have a detailed conversation about it and what we thought what our thoughts are on it do we feel like it's a little bit disappointing do we feel like it's okay do we feel like it it responds to Microsoft Flight Simulator these are the things that we can discuss and I have my opinion and I'd love to hear your opinions guys so comment below in the video your thoughts on it now at this time when this video is being made x 12 has not been released it's possible in a year's time if you're watching this series it will have been released so some parts of it may not be relevant but you'll be able to give them a different opinion of your thoughts on it um, so, once it's been out for a while, uh, the big news is that it's been released in beta. Uh, so that's something for us to take on board. Another thing to take note on is, and this is very critical, the videos they released last night, they made no secret of the fact that this is an early alpha version. So what can we take from that? Well, firstly, last year at the convention, they said they were making an X-Plane 12 and that it was coming. And at this stage, we've got to Alpha. So if, you had to, if I had to give a time frame before Beta goes out to the general public, I'm saying summer. We'll see. But I'm saying probably not before summer. Other people are touting Easter. Other people are touting Spring. 
I am saying summer. And the reason I'm saying south summer is because we're only seeing alpha variant coming out now. So that's my humble opinion. Based on the fact that we're only seeing early, early ish videos of alpha, I think they'll ramp up the videos to get more and more people interested. But at this stage, we're only at alpha and we aren't getting it to the general public until beta. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm right and we'll see how far out I was. But that's just my humble opinion. But I think it won't be till summer. And maybe not even till fall. So we'll see. Your thoughts on that, Adam? Yeah, sounds reasonable. It's in an early alpha now. Yeah. Um, so um, early alpha now, so based on that, that that's my humble opinion. Uh, you might see some content creators getting access to late alpha before the beta is released. Yes, that that's happening. That definitely is happening. So that, that people can start getting ready to migrate their planes, sceneries, etc. over early. So on the day of release, a lot of these other companies will be ready to migrate over very, with a simple update. But anyway, what we'll do, we're coming into the climb now, we're at 20,000 feet. We'll take a look at this video, um, and I'll share, you, share my thoughts on it. So, um, let's see what I can do here. Let's have a look. So, a couple of things to draw on very quickly, guys, that I've spotted on here. Some very obvious things. So, firstly, the clouds. Now, Austin said he's worked very hard on these clouds to give the clouds a much better feel for being clouds. And the way they look, the way they interact with the plane, the way they pass over the wings, etc., etc. So the clouds, from what I can see here, do look a lot better. Very obviously, we've got puddles on the ground. Clearly, we've got water. And as I found out last night, X-Plane, we'll be getting snow. And from what I saw, it's perhaps a work in progress because there was still a little bit too much snow on the runways. There should be snow either side. <coughs> Excuse me. And maybe some snow on the runways much further up north where the plane that you were choosing to fly would have like skis fit into it if that makes sense, as opposed to wheels. Or the option to have both. I believe the 737 Classic used to have the have wheels, but it also had skis on the front wheels as well, to, so it could slow down on runways with snow. But I could be way off. So I'm gonna keep this muted because I don't wanna get copyrighted. But let's just take a look at the plane. Uh, we go back. So, things that I've noticed, water is moving. This is very critical. Water hasn't moved in X-Plane at all. It does not move. But here, you can clearly see it is actually moving. So, that's also very key. Um, Austin, this, gap, this chap here is Austin, has worked extremely hard on the, the flight dynamics, how the wind interacts with explain it which makes it stand out over Microsoft and that is very key to his ah and he wishes to continue so these are the positives so far that I'm seeing I'm seeing better texturing and I'm seeing water on the ground which will cause spray and the spray looks like water when the water hits the window screen it looks like rain it looks like it should so he's worked very hard on that. So we'll fast forward the video to when he starts moving. So, as you can see, still water on the runway and he's still running down the runway. And, and because of the amount of water on the runway, he's slipping and sliding a little bit, as you would expect, especially in this way, that he's currently using. Um, 
he talks at great lengths uh, about the amount of work that's gone into the, the sky and the water and the texturing and the way that water uh, reacts to the plane. As you can see, that spray is coming off those wheels very clearly as water. So it looks a lot, lot better. Um, so definitely going in the right direction with what, as I said, is alpha. It is only alpha, but they're getting there. So my thoughts on what I've seen so far in X-Main is that it's coming along very nicely. I think X-Main 12 is coming along very nicely. Thoughts on things I'm not so keen about. Austin has made it very clear that he does not believe in using sceneries that come with the simulator. He thinks it's the wrong way to go, he's not going to implement it. So we will not be getting things scenery, we will not be getting Google Maps, etc, etc. That will not be coming whatsoever to the simulator. So why do I think this is ma a massive thing? I think if I'm honest, it's a mistake. I think things that people love about Microsoft is the fact that you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds to get a good looking simulator when you're flying in or out of a city or you're flying around. You know, they went with the Bing Maps. Well, that was easy for them because they owned it. So Microsoft didn't even really have to pay for it. I'm sure some sort of backhanded deal was done in order to keep the tax man happy, but the reality is they didn't have to pay for it. Well, Austin knows if he's going to use Bing Maps or Google Maps, he's going to have to pay for that to be put into the simulator. Um, the other thing is that he thinks by putting it into the simulator, it's going to cause more troubles for the simulator, as we've seen quite frequently, time and time again with Microsoft. So. These are, these are very critical things. Um, I personally don't think it's a good call. I understand where he's coming from, because I've experienced Microsoft and it's very interesting times where the frame rates have been absolutely horrendous. But they've got to that, they've got to the bottom of that. They're using more CPU to help render in that scenery. They've worked out that why render in scenery you can't see stuff like that which is massively helped with the frame rates and the, the stop the stuttering personally my Microsoft Flight Simulator right now is running amazingly until they break it so do I think him not involving that kind of scenery it's gonna hurt people that haven't got the money now I'm gonna bring you into this Adam if you don't mind yeah so Adam has recently come over to X-Plane from Microsoft and he bought some planes and he's bought a few little bits but what Adam would be the first one to complain about is scenery. That it just looks horrid when it's base scenery from X-Plane. Would you agree? Yeah, it's um, featureless, barren, yeah. flat, two-dimensional yeah it's poor it's poor yeah um and unless you spend hundreds of hundreds of pounds to bring that scenery up to some sort of standard you know it, it's just not there um so for for I've people to you on, on occasion budget, having a call yeah. you know oh, i'm i've enjoyed flying the zebo and x-plane but I'm going to go back to Microsoft because I just need something to look at when I'm flying. <laughs> and, and of course, I understand that because a lot of people do. You know, the only reason that I can be moderately happy in X-Plane is because of the investment I put into X-Plane. And, yeah. and, you know, that, that's, the, that's the key thing. You know, you have to kind of make your bed and lie in it. Like the conversation we were having last night with Shane about PD3 was what we did what was our thought what was his thoughts on the possibility of looking into getting PD3 as well or as an as another simulator an add-on assimilator he said well the, the issue is and I wrote down the figures and I still have them here 
but getting PD3 is not cheap either because I wrote down the numbers as he was calling it out so just to buy the simulator so see see quickly guys the way Austin's discussing the dynamics the wind dynamics off against that plane there so you know it's very critical to him that the planes continue to fly as they should with the resistance whether it's good or bad uh, still being very much key to how the plane flies um, so getting back to the pricing of PD3 you're, you know you're talking 60 pounds to buy the simulator which in itself is not very expensive for a simulator or for any game in this world that we live in now 60 pounds is not very expensive but that would just get you the game stroke simulator what it won't get you is the sceneries the way you want it to look to bring it because let's not forget that PD3 is FSX but went off in a different direction and because of that you're talking about a simulator that's 10 years old and to bring that simulator up, up to date the prices were something like 90 pounds 45 pounds 53 pounds times three just for different levels of scenery and the final price i got from the conversation last night was 31 pound for something else as well and that my friends is without buying planes and that's the key thing you're still going to have to buy planes and those planes are going to be expensive 120 pounds won't be unreasonable for a plane with the add-ons to go with that plane so it's where do you draw the line well for me it's easy i've drawn the line the all my time and effort money has been invested in next plane i'll still fly microsoft because i bought it it was what I started out on, it's what I broke my teeth on, as it were, was Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I moved on from there into X-Plane, saw the way forward, and I spent the money on X-Plane because I got sick and tired of being used as a guinea pig in uh, Microsoft as a beta tester. Because that's that was my humble opinion. When, when Aerosoft and Microsoft Flight Simulator first came out uh, last week, two years now coming up to two years this summer maybe over two years depending on when you watch this video um, the early release well not the early release the release the first release is horrid horrid and it's taken developers to fix planes that Microsoft have barely bothered to do anything with a couple of updates to the 787 but the reality is they've had to get developers in that have shown their ability to take the plane and make it better and bring them on on the payroll of Microsoft in order to fix the things that Aerosoft could not fix. So I know Aerosoft was pushed to release it and it wasn't ready and they said it wasn't ready but Microsoft said look lockdown we need this out now we, we this is the opportunity for us to make back all the money we've put into this so that's why it was released but it was released in my humble opinion in such a way as to to really make us the guinea pigs let's just um, move that back over there guys um, and just to keep an eye on our plane sorry if we're, I'm ranting a little bit but I, you know I've said for a while that I need to have a discussion about X plane sorry just caught my mic um, you know I need to have a conversation about X plane 12 my thoughts on it you know what was was it good? Was it bad? You know. Be right back, Paul. Sorry. Yeah, go on. Go. It's fine. So we've got 200 miles to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up another video that was released last night. Um, so the next video I'm going to show you guys is, and this one's very interesting. So I'm just going to pull this onto the screen so you can look at it as well whilst we're sitting here climbing slowly but surely up to 360 so here as you've seen on my channel is the A330 I showed you an intro of that new plane that was coming by default to X-Plane 12 so that will be a free plane that will come with X-Plane 12 and here we're seeing snow the first time ever we're seeing snow in X-Plane 12 um, being put in rather than you 
finding a way to put it in or not having it at all, at all. so as you can see on the ground this time that water has now been replaced with ice so again the only thing that will concern me there is this again look at the water moving looking very nice that it's moving um, the thing that concerns me there is a runway wouldn't have ice on it you know and that in my humble opinion is something they need to look at because it, uh, if that plane was really lining up on that runway with that amount of ice on it the plane would never take off it just simply wouldn't but the whole point of this video in this particular time is to discuss the build up of ice on the wings which will be modeled now so you will get wing on you know you will get uh, ice on the wings etc etc but when I watched this video it seemed to be promoting this plane more than promoting X plane if I'm honest um, I just thought yes you know the level of detail being put into what will be um, a free plane is really very good I mean for a free plane I, I, I couldn't fault it I'm sure people will find reason to fault it but the dynamics of it, the way it looks, the texturing, which we're now going to have a look at. The texturing of inside the plane looked pretty good to me. Probably could do with a bit of wearing, but again, I know this will be something the community will grab hold of. And they'll wear the screens, they'll make the screens look more worn. They'll make the, the cockpit in general look more worn. So that, that will come. But as for the modelling, all the buttons are working. Everything's doing what it should do. So... That, that's impressive um, that that's coming and that's already being shown off in the simulator in full working condition so that that's good too we're, we're getting somewhere what I don't see and I didn't see in last night's video and perhaps it'll be an add-on that will come later is any sort of uh, flight back I do not see that in that plane I didn't see it in the video last night so that's possibly to come um, it's like my TOLUS you know it doesn't sit it, my flight bag is sitting there, as we call it. I mean, we call them flight bags, but the reality is that, you know, the tablets. Well, mine's sitting there, but you can recall that. You can, you can also recall the flight bag from the options. Um, but if, when I was watching that video last night, I did not see any kind of tablet here, tucked down here. You know, I didn't see that. So, I don't know what the situation with that is at this time. So anyway guys, I've ranted and raved about it, you know, do I think the, the lack of scenery being coming out with this plane as an answer to Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think it's a mistake. Me too. Yeah, I think I think they've, they've grossly misunderstood the situation. I don't think, I understand why Austin's gone that way and I understand his thoughts on it, you know, but I think the reality is it's not a good enough answer some of the stuff that they've implemented and are going to implement into X-Plane 12 will be a good response to Microsoft but I think they're going to get a lot of people that are not happy about the lack of scenery still um, and this is key and this is very key you know this is their option their chance X-Plane 11 was phenomenal you know then Microsoft Flight Simulator came along, rewrote the book, and x 12 had to come along and rewrite the book again. And it, they're not leveling up. And that's my, that is my serious concern, is they're not leveling up. They're, they're doing some amazing stuff with it. And we're only seeing Alpha. So there will still be more great things to come to x 12. But I think Austin's option, choice not to put scenery into the, the simulator, is a mistake. I don't think he's going to get the, the amount of sales that perhaps he was hoping he would get or an answer to Microsoft. So comment below goes what, you th what your thoughts are on this. Do you think like I do and Adam that it's a mistake because people on the lower budget can buy the sim but they can't buy the sceneries. Yeah you'll be a, there's a massive market out there on the x forums where you can get airports and that. And yes, of course, you can use ortho, but I mean, ortho's not cheap, and that in itself will take 
you know, a lot of money and a lot of time and you'll require very good internet. It's a conversation I was having with Adam last night. It's great having the ability to use Ortho to download the kind of scenery you want, but you're gonna need lots of terabytes of space and you're gonna need very, very good internet to be able to do it. Now, I know most of us have got that, but some people haven't. Adam is a, like, a person in particular that doesn't have great internet. It works for what it needs to do. But people live in the countryside or they live in rural areas or, you know, or outskirts of towns and their internet isn't that great. The options aren't there. Now, I'm sure in a few years time those options might change, but right now it's going to limit his ability to use things like Ortho when it's taking a week to download one lot of Ortho to do one route. And that, and that was key to that conversation last night with Shane Adam. Is yeah. You, you know, it's all well and good saying, oh, well, I can get all of Ireland. But you've got to, you know, well, well you're going to keep it. Why? Why, why are you going to keep that? That's that stuff on a, on a hard drive. You know, if you only go like mm. I do, when I go to Ireland, the chances are I'm either a lot higher, so it wouldn't matter what's below the plane, especially when I've got active weather anyway. The weather's never that great over Ireland. But if I go to Ireland, the most likely place I will go to is Shannon, but 99% of the time, Dublin. So the only part of that ortho I would need is literally the approach into Dublin, coming off the Irish Sea, and I would say five miles around Dublin Airport. I don't need yeah. the whole of Ireland, you know? So, and then the route. You know, you, these other streamers out there, I'm not gonna mention them by their names because, you know, that's not how it works on YouTube, but, you know who I'm talking about, the big streamers that do this. What they'll do is they'll, they'll go, right, they'll sit down with a pen and paper and they'll say, well, I'm gonna go from here to here. I'm then gonna fall, therefore gonna download ortho from here to here, close range there, close range there, you know, 17 all the way across, and therefore their simulator looks good. Well, I went a different way and I went with, right, I'm just gonna buy ortho, uh, Orbex scenery. So I bought the whole of the UK, I bought all of Spain, I bought the Canaries, the, the Balearic Islands and all that. All, so I don't have to download anything. I bought it, sucked up the cost and I bought it, bought some additional airports. And then this week I went out and I bought the whole of the West Coast of the USA and I also bought Florida. So I've got options over there. And of course, on top of that, you can get your airports off of xplane.org. If you know, some of them are excellent some of them not so good sometimes you might look at spending 10 12 15 pounds 20 22 dollars whatever um and buy a nice airport but i don't agree with the explain way of going about things it's all right if you can write that money off but for pe some people they can't write that money off thousands of pounds in scenery and if it's not thousands of pounds in scenery it's hours and hours and days and weeks trying to trying to download ortho so just things when you can bear. just get it for free in microsoft and yeah. don't have to download anything exactly it's just there and, yeah and this is this is why i always give props to microsoft for all their problems and their negativity and the issues with the planes and oh my god the issues with the planes have been horrendously bad over the last 18 months it drove me out of microsoft it got so sick and tired of every time i got into the sim another bloody update broke the sim made it worse mm -hmm. terrible terrible fps you know micro stutters something horrendous having to go into my own system telling microsoft flight simulator don't use core one or see you know use the other core spread the work out i shouldn't have to go in and do that to a simulator in order to have some yeah. sort of an experience with my simulator fix it don't keep breaking it and this is what they do they keep on breaking it yes they take a step forward but sometimes with these updates they take two steps back and that and that's might be my bone of contention with microsoft you know? in a good place at the moment but... it's in a very good place but you that's the scary part adam you said it yourself microsoft is in a good place at the moment even myself, I'm getting a lovely experience and a very enjoyable experience being in Microsoft Flight Similar right now. 
but it's only until the next update and then that next update comes and I'll tell you how you can spot that I'm not the only one saying this watch all the streamers watch all the big streamers they know there's an update coming it's gonna come out on Thursday what do they do they do videos they do live streams they'll do that on the Monday Tuesday Wednesday in case it breaks in case on the Thursday the update comes out they break the simulator they can't stream it something's wrong it won't work we're all full all go full back mode into PD3 explain whatever until Microsoft fixes it and sometimes Microsoft and Aerosoft they just close their head they close their eyes they don't no 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 there's nothing wrong it's you lot you're all crazy thousands of people commenting my can't play the sim it's crashing to desktop yeah yeah before finally they'll release a very quick update because they've realized where they've broken it you know so that's my point at the moment Microsoft is in an amazing place and it's it's an enjoyable sim to fly in and I am having a great time with it but it's always a case of until when now if it stayed like this for six months you know we we'd all be praising it while we're getting in the right direction now and the planes are coming and this is the other fundamental things the planes are coming but every time Microsoft does an update this is why people complain about 737 800 coming to the simulator why is it taking so long why is it taking so long well the simple answer is why is it taking so long is because every time the the big houses out there that are making these these planes get to that point where they're actually not far away from being able to give a release date Microsoft and Aerosoft come along update the sim and break their plane what happens they have to go back recode the plane and start again and this has happened multiple times so the planes are coming and we need those planes we really do we don't need captain sim whatever his name was with botched planes you know we don't need the the botched becker 737 you know oh no it was horrible planes but people were coining in on it because you know people were screaming out for 737s you know the 757 the 767 with the wrong cockpits and things like that oh my lord you know and and that is one of the reasons why I'm so heavily invested in X-Plane because I have those planes now you know because it's been around longer yes I accept that I totally accept that but that's what I want as a streamer I want to give you guys the ability to watch things that you want to see you want me to be in different planes you want to experience different places around the world so you know I'm doing that for you T top of descent is reached so we need to lower the altitude oh my lord maybe not so oh, I was thinking as well when I was cool. watching that X-Plane 12 video thought yep. he was a bit Austin was massaging his own ego a bit in that video yeah he uh, I mean yeah that plane was designed by him the real life plane it was designed by him mm. it's got his name on it the cockpit was designed by himself uh, mm. he owns that plane in real life and I think he was just showing off the fact that he'd got one of those planes and that he designed it Yes, he did. He did show some features that are a massive improvement, like the rain, like you've just said. But um, I think, in comparison, I think he just wants to go a different direction than Microsoft, just to be different. Mm. And, and that's going to be his downfall, I think, because well, the thing Microsoft have got more ears to the ground than than mm. X Plane, and, and Microsoft is such a massive company and a huge developer of software mm. see the thing that the thing with Austin is explain is the only simulator flight simulator out there that will actually go towards your hours of learning with your private pilot's license it will actually count it's the right. only simulator that is recognized as being as good as it as it has to be in order to count towards your private pilot license so you can actually use those hours to log in against your private pilot's license. And because of that, he wants to stay down that path. Now, Microsoft, no, 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 no. 
no, no, no. The planes aren't flying correctly. The sim is not correct in any way, sense of form. We've seen it ourselves. There's, there's, there's no resistance against the planes properly. You know, wind isn't really a factor still. They're working on it. I get you. I get that. But it still is not correct. And that is very key to explain, and which is why he doesn't want to go too far right. Because if he yeah. goes too far right, it might go too far Microsoft. And he'll lose that recognition that you can fly X-Plane and you will get hours off your PPL. And that's that's the thing that he's got in his head, that I don't want to lose the, this epitaph, whatever the word is correct, correct word. I don't want to lose that because that's what makes me better than Microsoft. You can use my X-Plane and it will count towards your private pilot's license, your training. You know, it's recognized by the F, uh, FDA. It's recognized by all the leading, you know, trainers and organizations as being good enough to, for you to go home and train to fly on it and it be accepted as part of your PPL. So that's that's key. But you're right. You know, yeah. in, in videos that I've seen of Austin, he, he loves his simulator. Let's just say that. I don't want to say anything detrimental against the guy because that's not my thing. But, you know, you, you could say, yeah, it was, there was a lot of boasting. But is it boasting or is it hype to what's coming? I don't know. Mm. Um, as I said, guys, I'd love it if you would comment below as to your thoughts on, on X-Plane and Microsoft. I, I haven't really ranted into a video, but because they're starting to release quite a few more videos on it now, I want people's opinion on it, what your thoughts are. You've heard my thoughts on it. You've heard Adam's thoughts on it. Um, have you got any additional thoughts on it, Adam? Um, not really. I'm I am just really disappointed about the scenery thing. I think if they'd done that, if they'd made an effort to even at least improve the scenery. I know they're bringing in seasons and winds that move the trees and things like that. But and the water. <laughs> But well, I'm not going to see that at 37,000 feet, so... That's very true. That is very true. I'm only going to see that when I'm taxiing to the runway. Yeah, that's true. You know, at 37,000 feet and you're looking out the window... Uh, and all I can see now, when I'm looking out the window now, at 30,000 feet, is, is what looks like my grandma's carpet from the 1980s. Like... <laughs> Just a beige, <coughs> random pattern. <coughs> That's a, that, is a, that is a lovely way to describe it. The only thing I see is my grandma's carpet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Adam. But you're right. I mean, I, the only reason I don't see it is because I've got, like, certain mods that take the, the default scenery and just... Well, well I, I was until X... Uh, active weather decided to throw the correct weather in a little bit more accurately but up until then I, I have fields I I have things that make it look better below me without actually I haven't paid anything for that as such you know I, th I think it was a small amount of money just to make the Sunni look a bit better below mm. um, what graphics card do you use I use a Radeon uh, I have a RX 6700 XT I think what we really need to do is have a conversation with um, Shane because there are, I mean like Europe is not my area, I, I haven't got anything in Europe and yet for some reason my ground textures look really good even uh, without anything and I know that there, there might be some cheap, very cheap add-ons that you can buy, we're talking less than £20 here. Yeah. That just made the global map look better. Look a bit better, yeah. Yeah, um, it might be which worth we could, at. yeah, which we could look at to give you. So at least you're not looking at Grandma's carpet, you know. <laughs> and I know what you're talking about. I've seen that Grandma's carpet when I first start the explain scenery. Uh, explain when I haven't put all my add-ons in, and I see it and it's like, oh, ugh. you know what I mean? It looks horrid. 
So I, I do totally understand where you're yeah. coming from on that. I'm sure some people will say, well, it's a flight simulator, not a scenery simulator. But, but then if that's the case, why have Microsoft so passionately gone the way they've gone? Yeah, and it and it works. Like and it works. Everyone says, everyone that flies in Microsoft says, wow, this looks amazing. Yeah, and that's what's that's what and you know took it off in a very big way when it was initially launched was because this is the right way to go this is what we need so you know this is what we're looking for so so let's see what happens isn't it I, um, I think there are things we can do to help you get your simulator looking a little bit better for sure mm -hmm. that's you know with very minimal amount of money like I say I don't have Europe um, and yet my scenery if I if I didn't have clouds right now and I shared my screen you'd be like yeah mine doesn't look like that like I have proper squares and fields and everything below the plane yet I'm not paying for anything under there other than a few little add-ons that I bought from Orbix that just improve the textures of the ground yeah but I don't have ortho that's making it look like that which is another option but at least it's not I've got greens, different colours of greens. I've got fields in different colours. I've got roads, texturing and things like that. So there might be some things that we could do to your sim that um, we haven't tweaked with because me and Shane worked very hard tweaking my, my settings to get the best looking view so that the plane looked good and the Sunni looked good. So there might yeah. be some bits that we're missing with yours that we haven't really looked into. But anyway, We'll look into that. So, as you can see, guys, um, while we've been, I was prattling on about x -Plane. Um We're now uh, approaching our airport. Just as usual with the with this plane, you do have to keep an eye on uh, things like the altitude. It has got a horrible ha habit of concentrating on just getting its speed down and not descending in time. So, you really need to keep an eye on that. I often will sit here when I'm flying and I'm not recording it and I'll just keep this open and I'll just keep one eye on it just the one and just make sure that it's it's coming in like here at Luso we need to be up at, uh, on or around flight level 125 just want to make sure that that's correctly being achieved this plane has called me out a few times uh, let's just say um, Right, let's have a look. Where are we on the map of goodness? Uh, just trying to see where we are. So if uh, something's very wrong, I can't see it's on flights. In, I mean, I can't see it's on batch by. Oh, there we are. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it now. So let's get the meta organised for our arrival, and we can set that up in here while we're doing that. Yeah, I know the speed brake is out. Thank you. Uh, we'll just pull back the speed brake. Okay, that's done. Just want to keep an eye on this Luso because if we're even as much as 2,000 feet above at Luso, then obviously we're going to have a hard time coming down as we get nearer. So let's organise our performance page and let's go with the descent. So let's just go in here. So the QNH for our arrival is 1017 for the QNH. I don't know if you want to make a note of what I'm saying here. 017, yeah. Yeah. And we're going to go with Config 3 as our approach and the winds are currently. 290 at 3 knots, so 290 at 3 knots, combine that in, the temperature is a balmy 3 degrees, and that will give us our V speed for our arrival, so that's perfectly good, um, that's looking good. That's looking good. So I'm going to activate the approach phase. 
cool, that's good. That's now gonna help with the plane coming in. I, I think I will actually go with full config uh, for, for our arrival. Not knowing the airport, probably not a good shout or a bad shout. So flight level at Lusso was on or around 12,000 feet, so we were fine on that. So the next one I'm gonna be watching and keep an eye on is Nimus. We want to be at 9,300, so I'm just going to make sure that these dots are being achieved. So, just watch, keeping an eye on that dot there as it's coming down. But we then start descending to that. Because at the moment, it's descending with the speed a bit too much. Um, there we go. So, I've just got to keep an eye. You've got to keep an eye on these things. It's, you know. So let's have a look. I'll just go initial 4,000. And then we're going to take over the descent. So let's put it at 2,000. Oh, Lord. There we go, at 2,000. And we'll just monitor the descent. Just want to not have any issues coming in. I hope. By the way, guys, you're enjoying this series. Mini, uh, I keep calling it a mini-series, but it really isn't a mini-series at all. Um, a large series. Very long series. I mean, you're watching this video, which has been recorded a week beforehand, because, obviously, those that have been watching regularly, Eddie, um, will know that Adam's got a new job. So, what we're trying to do is create a a series of videos in time that will allow Adam to not be so available maybe just once a week or twice a week maybe not even you know maybe not even a week you know but have some flexibility Adam sort of tagged along on this world around the world thing hopefully you'll stick around but obviously work comes yeah. first so um, on that basis we want to make sure that uh, we're, uh, we've got Adam in, in with us. Right, so I said the QNH was 1017, so let's uh, put that in. So we're now at the right situation there. So the next waypoint is Redmi at 7980, so we're just keeping the descent on, doing fine. Just keep an eye on it. Speed has obviously increased, so bear that in mind. So we'll just slow down the descent as we're slightly ahead, so that's fine. As long as we got that green dot up or above, I'm not massively down here, then we're all right. So let's just keep an eye on this speed. I'm just going to pull back the speed now as we are under 10,000 feet. So I'm going to pull the speed back to 230. I'm going to keep the descent on, I'm going to use the speed brake to help the plane slow down. There we go, I'll have a quick look outside, you can see the speed brakes are out now. Just helping it descend. And guys, if you've got questions about anything we've discussed today, or simming in general, leave a comment below. Don't forget to join the Discord, it's a good little community out there of very experienced flyers. Uh, all these links are in the description of the video below, so make sure you do that as well. So here we go, X-Plane is running in real time because frame rate is less than 20 FPS. X-Plane will automatically dis disconnect in 19 seconds if you do not fix your 9 seconds, I'm going to get disconnected. <laughs> Just look at the floor, look at the floor real quick and then loop back up. Nope, too late. Just going to turn my, uh, some of the screens down because, believe it or not, I'm not using them. But they are ser they seriously do eat a lot of FPS. So you turn them, turn off screens you're not using, and you do gain quite a bit of FPS back. I will now reconnect, and we'll see if I <laughs> can manage to resolve that. look at the tablet and we were look we're borderline on 20 fps here yeah 
Yeah, it's still, it's still saying it's going to disconnect me again. I'm not sure why that keeps happening to you. Uh, it's because I got my settings up too high. It's as, sim it's as simple as that. I know, but you sh your graphics card should be able to handle that. Yeah. You think? Like I'm, I'm currently at 40 frames per second. It's quite comfortable. Inside yeah, right. the plane. Outside the plane, it's more, it's 60. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. It's definitely... Definitely not a happy bunny. Okay, let's get the ILS switched on. And that's fine. Hopefully that's something else. The uh, every ish, uh, resolve in X-Plane 12 is the uh, optimization. Yeah. Let's hope so. So as we come round to intercept the ILS, we want to be on or around 3,000 feet. So we're doing fine. We're doing just fine here. Let me close that off, and we get getting the weather now. Yeah, we got 24 FPS now. So we're just slowly creeping up. It's because it's loading in all the scenery that I'm about to land at as well. That won't, won't have helped. Okay. Two, ten. Fine, we're above the ILS, that's fine. ILS kicks in at 3,000, so we'll bring it down one more thousand feet. We're just sending 1,000 feet. Oh. Okay, as we come around this corner now, we will go over and make sure that the landing lights that I never switched off are still on. And chuckle vision. Did you like that one, Adam? Make sure, the landing, that one. make sure the landing lights are still switched on that I didn't switch off. <laughs> there you go, there's the thing that Eddie can point out. Yeah, there you go Eddie. Uh, flaps one. Okay. It's all going to happen pretty fast here guys. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, arm the approach. Okay. Down to 180, uh, 190 initially. Flaps two. What did you say the Q and H was again? Sorry, one zero three. Q, one zero uh, one zero one seven. Okay. Okay. So we're in we're in the ILS. With things looking good. On um, uh, Cat three. I always do that, guys, just in case there's suddenly a problem. But as we know, I always land the planes myself, unless we've got serious visibility issues. I don't perceive that to be the case today. There we go guys. Definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be excellent if you could. And hit the like button if you've enjoyed today's video. Uh, episode 9. Myself and Adam, after this one, will be working after a cup of tea, I'm sure. On to episode 10. Wow, visibility's just gone to zero. land coming in. 2,500. Yeah, my windscreen's completely covered in ice. Oh, there we go. Ha! That was interesting. Okay, speed come down now to 160. Okay, that's fine. 
Okay, let's go for laps three. Let's get the wheels out. Two oh, that goes the scenery again. Right. Wheels out. And we'll get the cameras on. Okay. For the naysayers that say I don't land the plane myself. To be fair, it's only one person that actually said it. But still. Okay. Let's just confirm we're coming. We are coming into land. And we can now go flaps four. Speed down to 150. One way in sight. Two. Once I'm on the ground, I will. I oh, could technically reconnect now. Hope that I don't bounce in on top of someone. Speed, 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 speed. Hit slow. We're we going up to one four four. Approaching one one. Approaching eleven. Okay, doing good so far. Landing gear is down, everything's looking green. Okay. Take off the autopilot. It's now my plane. 500. 500 check. Again, guys, as I, I say to you guys, don't mess with the plane. Just keep your know, horizontal line perfect. Keep the plane level with where you're trying to go. Keep an eye on your two reds, two whites, and just keep the descent at the same as it was already doing. So nice and slow and steady two red two white just keep the descent on stay within the glide slope and as we go over the threshold pull back your throttles 50 40 30 20 pull. retard 10 yep yeah, okay back wheels down and down we go reverse is on Welcome to Warsaw, my friends. Welcome to Warsaw. And the rain has arrived as well. There we go, and we're off the runway. And we'll clear the speed brakes. How are you getting on, Adam? Yeah, I'm alright, mate. Like, are you nearby? Um, I'm about... 10 miles out. Okay, cool. That gives us enough time to park up and watch you come in. Okay. Taxi into the airport. Definitely wet car, mate, here. Yeah, it's pouring down the rain. Yep, it is. Could have been a perfect place to come with lot of airways. There are a lot of them parked up here. But there's also some of the Tanzis as well. So that's good. Good shout with the Lufthansa. So let's pick this bay here. The Tadza would not be one of those using a non-gate situation. Uh, 
that will go off nicely. Cool. So we'll keep the engines on and that for now. Uh, and we'll watch for our colleagues come in and then I will do the replay. Um, so let's see what the tower view is like to what and I'm coming. Uh, sorry about the pookery pookery. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't be able to see me now. Uh, I've got you yet. You definitely still online, yeah? Definitely, I can see you. <laughs> oh, right, okay. oh, there you are. Uh, okay. Oh, you're coming on the other runway. Yeah, I did okay. Yankee. Oh, okay. The same runway, just Yankee approach. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's another runway right here, but I'm realising that we didn't actually come in on that one. So here comes Adam. Uh, now in a totally different livery. Uh, from one to left. We take a little bounce there, Adam. In fact, are we taking many bounces, Adam? <laughs> uh, no, no, didn't bounce at all. Uh, we'll, we'll just say okay. On that, on our screen, there was many bouncing. That could be velocity, so yeah. we'll, we'll simply say that that could be velocity. <coughs> There's loads of gates where I'm parked, Adam, that are empty. Thank you, Dave. So we'll watch Adam come round and uh, park up and then uh, I will do the replay guys and at that point I will say thank you for tuning in to watch episode 9 um, it's a different video sort of video today we discussed in great length x 112 and uh, I look forward to your comments guys on that one Put Adam back here eventually. I've actually got an app that will allow me to actually. I keep going to put it on. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There. And here we go. I keep forgetting I have this option. <laughs> keep forgetting that I have this. And uh, it allows us to actually go straight to Adam's lane and watch exactly how he's coming in. So, I must remember to do that on the next flight, guys. You can actually click on his lane and go right up to his plane as he comes in to land. I'm s are you seeing two poles that you're going through right now? Yeah. <laughs> And there goes one wing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are in Poland, aren't we? Oh, <laughs> you just cut a pole in half. <laughs> I've called Poland. Yeah. Because when you land, you go through a pole. Yeah, and you sure did. Kind of cool that we can do this, but guys, you can actually watch as if it was me actually flying that plane, or in this case, taking out everything in in its uh, direction. In. Give you a wide berth, Paul. I always give Paul a wide berth. That's Paul life lesson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take that, Adam. There's only one way to take that. It's not politically. Good. I like the way it's going to give me a wide berth and then pull straight in on the same taxi way as me. Oh my mm. lord! <laughs> this is there goes me wings. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, 
just go over here somewhere. <laughs> Did you see that? I thought I'd uh, no, I thought I'd work on one past actually, but I didn't. Think You've gone to. You've gone to what from me now? Yeah. Um. Let me quickly share my screen, and you'll see this. Uh, this is free. You need this in your life. This is a free add-on. Uh, let me find this source. And I'll share my screen, and it's quite a really good bit of um, kit. So as you look on my screen now, yeah, when you get a second, I can literally zoom into your plane. I have. This is it. So Over. in a, in a normal view, this is what I would be, you know, limited to. Let me just say, I'll go back to my own plane. So, say I was over here. Don't mind the fact I'm suddenly looking at the floor, right? So say I'm looking at my own plane. And you're over there. I can go up here to my plugins, go to better camera. Hold on, was it you that gave me this? Yeah, I told you about this. Oh my god, yes, you did. And I can do that. <laughs> but, but when you come into land now, I've got to try to remember to use it. Because it'll be a great way of watching you coming into land at a much closer rate. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an excellent add on. Excellent, excellent add-on. I absolutely love it. Right, guys, let's go back to my plane and we'll do the replay. Uh, and we'll judge the shite out of my landing. And if you want to continue watching my screen, you can. And you can watch my landing because you wouldn't have seen it. You were too far out, which was good. We didn't. We weren't on top of each other. Stop. Right, let me go back, go back, go back, go back. Oh, too far, too far. Right, here we go. Uh, wipe his arms, wipe him first, doesn't matter. So, fast forward it. And we'll have a look at my landing. I didn't pick up on the obvious for my taxi and I'm a cargo plane on a gate. Yeah. Well, to us, you were a passenger plane, so... Yeah. <laughs> floaty McFloaty. And then look at that for a lovely landing there, guys. Look at that. Right, you're off the line. Very acceptable. Get a passenger view, which is full of wi full of uh, wing. But yeah. But not too bad, not too shabby. I haven't been in the Airbus for a little while, and that does, I think, they do land totally differently. Last one. So a tower view as we come in. I thought it was going to tower strike it, so that's why I had to level off a bit. I think if I'd have continued with that attempt to land, I would have tower strike the plane. So it's a good job to just level off a bit and bring it down a bit more. Yeah. go guys so that will uh, do us for today and this video uh, but don't forget guys comment below uh, what your thoughts are on x plane hit the like button and definitely uh, subscribe if you're new to my channel um, seven days a week there's content coming out on the channel whether it's these videos or live streams and we're also on twitch as well so keep your eye on if you're a twitch person as well um, thank you for watching, uh, to my friend Adam, uh, for accompanying us uh, yet again on our world, around the world trip. Thank you, Adam. No problem, thank you. 
and I'm sure we'll see Adam on episode number 10, which we're going to be doing after we've had a cup of tea and maybe some breakfast. I'm not sure, but yep, we'll carry on with the next the next video, and uh, we we'll wish you all a great day, and we'll, we'll see you on the next one. We're off air.